Well, I don't make my work for you to interpret it. I make it for black young people so that they can understand that we are at war, that we have to be strong-minded, that we have to be productive, that we have to be unafraid of expressing ourselves and getting what we want in this society. But isn't there a danger in telling young people, uh, encouraging them to be militant? Aren't you taking them down a track that can only lead to a cul-de-sac and at the same time alienating a lot of of people who really don't understand or accept or even grasp uh, that militant language. Well, what most people who know my work know is that I don't only teach young blacks to be militant, I teach them to be intelligent, substantive, to make analysis. I think that America has to stop painting young black people as being uncivilized and irrational, which is what they've done in the coverage of this story in Los Angeles. I think that we have to look at the fact that uh, black people didn't just run outside and burn out their houses because they were angry. The Beverly Center was, was wrecked and that's in a white area. Uh, Korean businesses were targeted because that Korean woman shot and killed Latasha Harlins, and she was convicted of the crime, and she did not one day in jail, and we got 25% of our black male population behind bars doing exorbitant sentences for small crimes, and we don't get justice. These are the reasons why people were attacked. Describe, as you see it, the gap between those young people and the rest of society. The gap between young people and the rest of society is that uh, young people don't have hope. Jesse Jackson says keep hope alive, but there is no hope because they look at the leadership, number one, and they say, okay, to get along in American society, you have to be a sellout. You have to be, put on a suit, talk like a white man, ask for what white people want, say what white people like to be successful. And young black people don't see that as something that they want to strive for. We want to be able to be who we are, talk how we talk, walk how we walk, live how we want to live, and be producers and providers for our children in the future. We want to be African. Didn't you want to go into politics once? You went to Washington and worked, didn't you? I went to Washington and worked, but once I found out that there was no work going on in Washington, I decided that I didn't want to be part of that scenario. What did you see? What do you mean, no work going on? What I saw was a lot of fake people, a lot of phony people. There are ways that I could intellectualize it, but I wouldn't even do that. Because okay. I'm not trying to show you my skills. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Well, I know from reading about you and from the young people on my staff, you, you have skills other than music, have you just seen. But what do you think about this, Robert Woodson? Well, I think I wish the issue were as simple as, as, as the young lady is putting it. When I asked myself then, it powers what we were striving for, and that was the call in the 60s. Why is it in my city of Washington, D.C., we have been in control of the courts, we have been in control of the city hall, the school board, zoning commissions, and yet poor blacks in that city are no better off when they were controlled by whites. The same is true in Los Angeles, the same is true of Atlanta. The issue is, uh, and so that uh, we are failing our own people in, uh, in some cases. And so it's really, in some cases, as I see it, it is the rules of the game that have to be changed, not just the sex of the ruler. Because if you, are, if you take over a government structure that mm. is, it is not fair to poor people, that emphasizes downtown development, where 80% of all the development dollars that flows into these cities develops downtown, none in the neighborhoods. Yet the neighborhoods and the violence there is used as a rationale for getting urban action grants in the 60s and 70s. But, but when that money comes, it does not go in the neighborhoods. And some black officials who are in control of it make sure that their friends are taken care of. And, and, and so that it, it doesn't matter then who controls it if what they do is the, corrupt. The thing that we have to be clear about is the definition of power. I don't consider Mayor Dinkins to be powerful. I didn't consider Marion Barry to be powerful. I don't even uh, consider the black woman who's there to be powerful. Tom Bradley, uh, uh, the guy in Los Angeles, I consider him who to be pitiful, powerful, who is not po powerful. Who is powerful? Powerful is when you can deliver resources services and substances to your people and not compromise. The only black people who can become mayors of these cities are people who compromise with the white power system and deliver the resources to other places other than our community in Los Angeles. And I think the reason why we wouldn't be sitting here if they would have delivered the right verdict is because white people wouldn't have been hurt, white property wouldn't have been damaged, and America wouldn't have lost to the tune of a half up to the tune of a half a billion dollars. In terms of solutions, however, for young people, I see it as um, black people having to put 
pressure on the system, continued and consistent pressure. That we need for? to, I'm going to tell you what for. What we need to do is get our experts together, make an economic assessment of our relationship to America, our contributions to corporate activity, and divest from America as a white racist institution. Black youth, we spend a lot of money on sneakers, we spend a lot of money on gear, we spend a lot of money on jewelry, and we're going to have to be unified. For the first time in Los Angeles, we saw unity between the Bloods and the Crips. We need that. Yes, we need black but youth. But Sister Soldier, they were, these two gangs out there were unified in looting the community. They temporarily abandoned their own enmity between each other and helped to ransack their mm -hmm. own community. Th that doesn't mean that I give up hope on their ability to become politically conscious. I think that black youth have been neglected and they've also been looted, which is why they're looted.